about you, Rog? Would that piece have existed without a commission? No, definitely not. And I like being commissioned. I like having lots of things on the go and being able to jump between different projects. And, um, and so it would never have made it onto my list of things to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm very grateful for it. Um, it's a strange thing. I like lists and to tick things off lists. And when you get a commission, it goes on the list and then you do it and then it comes off the list and that feels pretty good. Uh, so I, I try not to think about too, mu too many other elements of it, but I do try and use anything that I get asked to do for something that I w want to do anyway. Hence the, um, the idea for this story um, in that I would have been writing a novel at a similar time and having a particular issue with that novel um, that is trying to take elements from my own life and then to stop worrying about what I was using and what I was abandoning and then take a leap of imagination and put it into a completely different world that readers could believe in. And um, so it was kind of like a little test and short stories are ideal for those sorts of things. I want to keep them and use them and um, I would love to have a book of them in, in one day. But in the, meantime, in the meantime, I like to try and make commissions useful to me. Um, and so the, the story here, there's only really a couple of tiny fragments that are real. Um, there was um, the other character, Nick, is based on just me looking across at somebody else on the other side of the bar who was flicking between the band and the football. Uh, the band was real and, uh, and also the couple dancing that seemed to represent something wider about the society. And that I was having a great time while I was there, but something also made me a little bit uncomfortable, um, particularly about relationships sometimes between older men with money and younger women with none. Mm. And so that trickle of the finger was real, and that's where the idea came from. Mm. So I tried to use that and make something for me whilst also satisfying the commission. Mm. If I'd have thought about some of the very experienced writers that are on this and the pressure or indeed what I was getting paid, it would have never got done. I have to think selfishly. Did you feel that pressure? I mean, all of you, because there, there's been some very um, well-known names have been commissioned in this series as well. Was that intimidating or...? I'm fairly confident I'm better than most of them. <laughs> Rog, Rog said famously, uh, was it two years ago when Sean Connery um, appeared at the book I, festival? I have no memory of this, I've no idea I mean, what you're about to say. <laughs> Sean Connery came, I don't know if anybody's here uh, at the time, with Murray Grigger and, and took part in an event. I think the same day you were on, a bit later, and I remember you saying, well, this is the first time I'm going to be paid the same as, as Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> and with the commission, it was again a flat fee that, which the book festival yeah. believes in. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that kind of equality. Once I'm one of the famous writers, I'm going to hate it. You know. <laughs> but for now, it's great. What about you? Is um, it a commission something you've had many of in the past? No, no. this was probably one of the first commissions, I think. Um, and I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say I was intimidated by the fact that there were some really famous writers um, doing it. I think it was, just, it was just really exciting. And it was the kind of thing that I, I'd probably rang my parents and said, hey, guess what? I'm, doing the story and Ali Smith's doing one or something like that, you know. And, and it was just exciting and I was just pleased to be doing it. And I don't think you think too much about whose story is going to, you know, is it going to stand up against all these others? Because if you worried too much about that, you wouldn't, wouldn't really put pen to paper. So you just, just get on with it, really. <laughs> I guess with a piece of set writing, it's something that you're all, you were all used to when you were studying at various times at Glasgow, doing the creative writing course. What impact that course had on your work has had? Um, it, it was useful to be very disciplined and, and have to produce a certain amount. I'd see my tutor every fortnight, and I think we, we would look at about three thousand words per per sort of session. So that was that was always very good to sort of have kind of got in a, a discipline of, of sitting down and always having produced work. Not that I still always do that now, I have to say, but. Um, it mean, it, I, I have faith that I can do it. If, if, I, if I need to write something, I know that if I sit down and I make time, I will be able to produce something. Um, and that's, that's quite good, because I'd never really gone about writing in any sort of organised way before. It had been very haphazard. Um, and it's a bit haphazard now, especially with a baby, but you know, it, I know that I can do it, and that's important, I think. I think a total treat, actually. There's, there's something, and I really miss that from the course, as someone 
knowing that someone is like, expecting a thing, knowing, knowing that, that you're going to have an audience of one there, and it's, some, it's someone's job to be interested, you know? <laughs> and I work so much in isolation and so much on my own um, that it's, it's just really, really nice to know that you're going to hand that piece of work over to someone because, you know, books are, are they, just, they just take a long time mostly, and there's long spells of, of feeling a little bit alone with yourself in that, and you need that, but it's just, it's just really, really nice to know that someone's going to take it off your hands and, and ask you questions about it. Yeah, I miss that. <laughs> uh, I'll look at something of yours any time you like. Uh, um, uh, I'd, I'd agree with everything Jen said, but um, uh, for me it was absolutely crucial because it made me feel like I could be a real writer and it put me in a community of writers and crucially it put me under no pressure to write in a particular way. I found that I, I was amazed to find that writers were not aliens from outer space. There were people who were living and working in the city in which I was working, and they had once done the crappy jobs that I was then doing um, and dreaming of writing. And it made sense of the process that you go through of learning about um, how the rules of writing, but also the freedoms of writing. And it made me feel like I could do something with my life. So it was, for me, it was absolutely crucial. I'd really like to hear what each of you is working on now, and if in any way the pieces you've just been reading relate to it. Um, I, I've, I've been working on a second novel, which I nearly finished um, just when Ivor was born, and it, it'll be a while now before I can actually get it done. But um, it's, it's set in France, so it is, an, and I'd set about to do something not set in Scotland, because my first book was, I suppose, very Scottish, and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll try and get away from all those characters, and it can be quite difficult when you, you've written a whole book and, you know, you're really in the minds of those characters, and I just thought, felt I needed to go as far away as possible so that I didn't slip into writing the same sorts of characters again. Um, so it's set in France, and there's um, a, slightly, a slightly fantasy element to it, which uh, has, so I suppose that's a little bit like The Tin Kin, there's a, a bit of that in The Tin Kin. Uh, very different to Suswallow, I think. That was more of um, was a different kind of thing. I'm st it's still early days for me, so I'm sort of trying all sorts of all sorts of writing still. I don't think I, it's quite hard to make connections between things for me at the moment. Um. What about you, Jen? I'm trying to write extended prose, and um, I've been trying mm. to write a novel for some time and I don't feel like I'm doing it fluently and unconsciously yet and I sort of aspire to that and I don't know if that's a, a reasonable aspiration or not. Um, so this was useful for me because I was trying to work out how to how to judge my own prose sentences if you like and you'll, you'll have noticed that I've, I found it quite hard to read this. I don't normally find reading hard. I find poetry an easy thing to read. It's, it's choreographed. The, the pauses and the stresses are um, more or less signposted in there. And the longer sentences, the more breath needed, the kind of con more distant connections of sense I find really hard to do. And I was just feeling my mouth struggling over that a little bit. So I think one of the, one of the things that I want uh, the novel to be if it happens is something that is readable as as I find poetry readable. I don't necessarily mean um, a, a poem novel as, as people sometimes set themselves to write, but just something where the, the speech rhythms are quite marked and it's quite spacious and sayable, um, because otherwise I'll be mortified if I ever have to read it out loud. <laughs> is, it, is it quite hard to change, as it were, direction? Having won a prize as prestigious, you know, and, you know, illustrious as the T.S. Eliot Prize for your poetry, is a kind of a weight of expectation that you'll, you will now have a, you know, an even more glowing career in poetry. Is it, is it hard to say, no, I'm going to write a novel now? I mean, Rogers managed this, you know, to uh, switch between various genre of writing, mm -hmm. but I suppose with, from poetry to a, a novel it seems quite a big leap. Mm -hmm. It's, it's hard to be looked at and, and to have something expected. And, but I, I like to think that will wear off, you know, people forget. <laughs> and, um, the, the last book of poetry is a long, long time ago now, and I, and I always find it hard to start writing. I mean, it, I, I've got this feeling that as long as I'm writing, it will always be about me working out how to write, how to start writing. And 
start to write, and every time it will be like starting from scratch as if I'd never written before. So I don't, I don't feel like I have too much about too much of a block of going from the one form to the other. I just have a block about doing the thing. You know, um, I don't think it's a form specific block, mm -hmm. really. Uh, the link between this and other work yeah. you're asking about. Um, yeah, for me, a very direct link between this story and the novel, mostly because I was trying to write in a more direct, mm. pacey, unafraid voice and write about an unlikable character that people would still want to read about. And that was what the novel, that's the central character of, uh, of the novel. And um, my protagonists have always been wet before, you know, people wet. who, wet, yeah, you know, people who would you know, dream of perhaps one day getting on with something, but probably not getting round to it. Um, uh, whereas the novel is very, very much about action and somebody who does too much without thinking. Um, and so, as I hinted at before, this was kind of an exercise in trying to write in an unafraid way, not to, to get rid of a lot of the anxiety and the worry and what if my mum reads it? Um, <laughs> and uh, all that stuff is, even when it's not consciously informing what you're doing, it is there. Um, and I think it's very important to write in an unafraid way, and all my favourite writers are like that. So this is an exercise in trying to build that skill for, partly for the novel, I suppose, and to be able to make that a convincing voice. Mm. It's so nice to hear that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's, all be, let's all be unafraid. <laughs> That's a good battle cry.